Hey there, Steve here, hope you're doing well. In today's video, I'll teach you three techniques that you need to know to get started with MathRock, and I'll give you an exercise for each one. If you're new to MathRock and or looking for a place to start, this is probably the perfect video for you. All right, so besides the techniques that we should be all learning, such as like alternate picking, um, you know, hammer on and pull off, slides, bends, these kind of things, there are three techniques that are commonly used uh, by guitarists to play MathRock. And these three techniques are the most synonymous one is going to be finger uh, tapping, then we have finger picking, and then lastly we have something called hybrid picking, which is one of my favorite techniques. Though these three techniques are commonly used, they are by no means, uh, you know, they don't have their roots in this style of, in, in the style of math rock. Uh, however, the way that guitarists who play math rock have used them and developed them and expanded on them is what makes them synonymous with the style. So for example, if you take a look at the technical yet groovy finger tapping riffs of Marcus Menner. Or we could look at the wonderful, wizardly, smooth, flowing, like water tapping riffs of uh, Yvette Young. For finger picking, we need to look no further than basically Tim Collis of TTNG for his finger twisting uh, finger picking riffs. And lastly, hybrid picking just makes it so much more easier to play a lot of string skipping riffs and it's often used by guitarists to play like a, a blend of like math rock and prog, like that math prog style. Of course, there are many more examples that I could give. There are just so many talented guitarists who are playing math rock. Um, however, I believe the examples I just gave there will suffice to show uh, what is achievable by using these uh, techniques. So now we know the three commonly techniques employed by math rock guitarists. Uh, I want to give you an exercise for each one that's going to help build up your dexterity and just get you started with learning each one of these techniques. Therefore, I'll assume that you're new to each one of these techniques, so apologies as if some things are already obvious or you already know some of these things. Um, however, I do recommend during your practice session that when you practice these techniques that you try to generate as many repetitions as possible. Try to use a metronome. Um, there's a good multiple reasons for this. Using a metronome is going to not only help you improve uh, your timing, but it's also going to help you improve the generation of repetitions. How many repetitions you do of that exercise in a practice session. You want to get your metronome to a comfortable comfortable level where you can play at a comfortable speed with each one of these techniques uh, that I'm going to show you for each one of these exercises and s increase it by multiples of three till you get to a point where you can't get it correct every time. At this point, this is an optimal level for development. You'll find that sometimes you get it right, sometimes you get it wrong. This generation of errors is going to force your brain to adapt basically. Uh, there was a neuroplasticity in your brain will develop new pathways to help you compensate. So the next time you come back to that practice to practice that exercise, you'll find you're more competent with it and you'll be able to play it at that tempo. This is basically how you know you learn any new skill. So to reiterate, a metronome is not only good for helping you keep time, make you sound more you know, uniform, it's also very good for forcing you to generate as many repetitions in your practice section. So basically being as, as efficient as possible. So for finger tapping, this is a two-handed tapping exercise that's a great place to start. We're going to start on the low E string, on the 8th fret with your index finger and I want you to hammer on from nowhere, so basically tap. Then walk up chromatically with your other fingers. So on the ninth fret we'll have your middle finger, 10th fret your ring finger and 11th fret your little finger. So walk up like this. When you get to the 11th fret we'll introduce our other hand. On the 12th fret and with our index finger and we'll walk up chromatically again. So 12, 13, 14, and 15. So all together. When
when you're comfortable there, you can walk up all of the other strings too. So some tips for this one. With your fretting hand, we can use the underneath uh, of our index finger to rest lightly on the strings to mute any unwanted string ring. You're going to want to develop this as you practice this exercise, as you develop this technique. So if we don't do this, it will sound, we get a lot of string ring. Versus. So this really helps keep a, a, la a, li a lid on things. It keeps it much more smooth and muted in that regard. We can do the same again when we introduce the, the next part of the tapping. We can still use this hand as a mute. With your strumming hand, you can rest your thumb on the side of the neck here as an anchor. And this will help just uh, make things easier for you when you tap and more comfortable. And lastly, what I like to do is uh, put my ring finger on top of my little finger when I tap with this little finger, just to give it some more oomph, to give it some more strength. All right, so moving on to finger picking. For this one, we're going to concentrate on developing the technique, on developing dexterity. So we're going to ignore fretting at the moment, uh, playing any chords, any riffs, anything like that. And we're just gonna concentrate on developing this hand. To do this, we're going to use the, the metronome and we're gonna use different spacings of uh, groupings of notes. So we're gonna start with the thumb and then we'll work up through our other fingers. I'd like you to start on the A string for this one. And if you have a metronome, you can play on each of the beats. So if it was like one, two, three, four. And then we're gonna slowly introduce a finger by finger. So next we can have an index finger. Now we'll do a one and two and three and four and rhythm. Practice that. When you're feeling comfortable with that, now you can introduce your middle finger. And now we'll do a triplet rhythm. So like triplet, triplet, triplet. And then next you can introduce your ring finger. We're going to do a, a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a rhythm for this one. <music> Lastly, we're going to introduce the little finger and that gives us five. So we're gonna to have to play quintuplets. So five beats in the space of one. So to do this, you, you can count one E and a B, something like that. So one E and a B, two E and a B, three E and a B. You get this really odd feel from it. Lastly, looking at hybrid picking. So for this one, like I said, it's my favorite technique. Really good for string skipping. Uh, you get both best of both worlds. You know, you can strum with a pick, you can pick with your fingers, um, and you can do stuff like this. Which would be really difficult to do with just a pick. <laughs> you know, that much string skipping. Um, so for this one, we're going to alternate between the pick and each finger to get that string skipping pattern to start getting familiar with this exercise. So you're going to play the low E with the pick and then use your middle finger on the D string and alternate between those two. Now you can do the same with your middle uh, ring finger, sorry, but this time with the G string. And lastly, B string, E and B string with your little finger. All right, so that's it for three introductory techniques for the three common math rock techniques that you're gonna hear used by math rock guitarists. I recommend that you try them all out, develop which ones you find that you enjoy, um, think about what it is you want to play, who do you want to sound like, which guitarists inspire you, and look at the techniques that they are using. And you'll probably find that they're employing majorly one of these uh, techniques or using um, you know, one or two of them. So if you would like to learn more about these techniques, you can find 
find more about them developed uh, in my Mafra gu guitar guidebook. Uh, there's a link for that down below in the description. I want to say thank you very much to the patrons that are supporting this channel. If you'd like any of the tabs from this video, then you can find them over on my Patreon page. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.